Okay, good morning again. Uh, so let's just uh, get started with the wire types and such. All right, so I made a little table here. Mm. Control L for full view. Um, all right, let's just talk about the uh, solid core wire and the stranded wires uh, because these are the pretty much the two types of uh, wires that we will be dealing with when it comes to the this type of job that you're being trained for in this class. All right. So solid core wire and the stranded co stranded wire. All right. This is what a solid core wire looks like. It's a solid chunk of copper or sometimes aluminum or as they say in UK, uh, aluminium. All right. Now, over here, we have something that's called a stranded wire, which is also a chunk of copper, but it's broken into many strands that are combined together. And uh, based on the type of use uh, uh, and purpose, one is better than the other, well, depending on the situation. Right? So let's just compare these two. Solid core wire, solid core wire, description. Well, a single strand or core of wire insulated with non-conductive material. Well, sometimes it's not insulated. Uh, the bonding wire would be the example of that. Right? Uh, what matters is the shape of the wire and the way it's formed. Stranded wire, as opposed to that. Contestant number two, it's a bundle of small gauge wires insulated with non-conductive material. Well. Um, Sometimes, yes, you're going to have this thing uh, as, a, as a bare wire, not insulated. All right. Now, uh, notice that uh, there's the word gauge being used, and we will talk about that as well. Uh, all right, usage. Where do we use? Household and commercial material, um, household and commercial use uh, when it comes to solid wire. What do we have here for stranded? Household and commercial, so they can be both used in household and commercial situations. All right. Can we use that in permanent mount, permanent installations? St solid core, yes, we can. And stranded, yes, we can. So what gives, right? All right. Well, typical, this is the typical in-wall power cabling or otherwise called service cables. Service cable, uh, a service cable is a cable that uh, delivers uh, power, right? as opposed to other type of cables, such as signal cable, data cable, microphone cable, speaker cable. Okay, so this is a service uh, cable. Now, uh, other cables also use solid or st stranded, but we're talking about service cables in this class here. Now, uh, typically, that will be the in-wall power cabling inside the house uh, or a commercial, um, commercial building. Uh, you would have those installed there, the in-wall power cabling. And, well, here we have a little bit more in this table for the stranded wire. Moving or vibrating parts. Okay, we don't have that here now. And typically, typical industrial equipment cabling. All right, so typical in-wall power cabling, this would be for like building purposes, right? Um, like a commercial um, buildings or household, uh, whatnot. Um, construction type installations. Right? Now, this one here, if you decide to go the industrial route, like to be industrial electrician, you'll be, you will be connecting machines um, that vibrate, have motors in them and all that stuff. All that stuff, very technical. Uh, and that's when the stranded uh, cable is, uh, is, well, better. Right? So moving and vibrating parts. Typically in the industrial, if if you are connecting power to any sort of machines or wiring up a machine, just remember uh, the commercial use equipment uh, that you buy in a hardware store, you don't have to be an electrician in order to plug it in and use it. It's made that way. Right? Well, it's made for general public. Now. If you are uh, uh, if you're an electrician, like industrial electrician, and you're going to be asked to 
connect a new machine, like a CNC machine or whatnot, uh, it's not going to come with the, you know, with just a little power cord that you remove the plastic thingy from the prongs and you plug in. That's it's not it's not that's not how it's happening. Uh, it involves a little bit more uh, uh, complex type of an installation, and you will be ha you will have to choose the proper wires. So uh, moving and vibrating parts, just uh, just think about it. When there are some vibrations or somewhere there is vibrations involved. The solid core wire will carry the vibrations more efficiently, which for us is, well, it's going to work against us. Right? Because if the vibrations are carried through the wire, then the terminals, screw terminals, any kind of connections, they might uh, be compromised due to vibrations being carried through the whole wire. Right? Now, when it comes to vibrations uh, entering the physical vibrations entering the stranded wire, then they don't carry as well. It's just uh, it's a completely different situation that you are dealing with. The vibrations do not carry uh, through the stranded wire because it's more flexible. It's kind of a finicky type of thing, right? No finicky. Well, it's flexible. More flexible than the strand than the solid core. Somebody has got, somebody has their microphone turned on. Please turn it off if you could. Uh, <clears throat> uh, all right. So uh, here is the you know here is the main difference. Household versus now. Can you install uh, stranded wire in household uh, situation? Yes, you can. But normally it's not done because the stranded cable is way more expensive. Right? So that's probably the more the, the, the biggest reason. And uh, it's easier also it's easier to install the solid core uh, and well mostly that we're going to use the screw terminals for uh, for for our purpose. Uh, well, sometimes you do the Wago or the Moret type of uh, connectors which we'll talk about in further lectures. All right, advantages and disadvantages. Let's talk about this here. Uh, well, it's less expensive to produce solid core. It's less expensive to produce. So again, solid core, more compact diameter for the same current carrying capacity. Right. Now, uh, current carrying capacity. The more current we are going to try to push through the conductor the thicker the conductor has to be in order for things to be proper and safe right. again the more current we try to push through the cable we need thicker cable or conductor right. now you're going to need the same amount of copper uh, for certain type of ampacity Ampacity comes from ampere or ampere or ampere, which is the unit of the current, electric current. So if we specify the conductor for ampacity, we're specifying it for the ability to carry certain current. So, for example, gauge 14. And gauge specifies the thickness of the cable. Or, sorry, I keep saying cable conductor because cable is a bunch of conductors enclosed in a jacket uh, so when, when we're specifying the ampacity uh, for example gauge 14 which is the thickness and gauge we'll talk about that it's uh, awg american wiring gauge when you see the awg you just read it as gauge right uh, American wiring gauge and there are different numbers for different thicknesses there are standards right in Europe you would have the cross section in millimeters in North America we're using gauge and you know sometimes you're going to be uh, asked to specify things both ways one way or the other uh, so let's talk about the American wiring gauge gauge 14 is specified for 15 amps so the ampacity of the gauge 14 wire is 15 amps uh, gauge 12 
can carry more current because gauge 12 is thicker than gauge 14. Notice that the bigger the number, the thinner the wire. And vice versa. The smaller the number, the thicker the wire. It has something to do with old 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 long time ways of specifying uh, gauge for the military purposes um and uh, yeah please turn off your microphone somebody has the microphone turned on let's see all right uh, can't tell all right thank you uh, so uh, now when we're looking at for the same opacity or the same current carrying capability uh, for the same gauge which means it will have to have certain amount of copper per cross section so you will have to have certain amount of copper to carry the current so which means for the gauge 14 for example if these are, these these two have gauge 14 are gauge 14 which are a certain thickness which is certain thickness so it will have to have the same amount of copper per cross section now this here solid core wire is quite compact it's compacted and it's put together nice and tight so it will take the same amount of copper will take less space then if you have the same amount of copper in the form of different strands because you will have different uh you know it's it's a bunch of solid core wires small over small 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 gauge put together as a you know as a braid okay so it will the same amount of copper if you look at this thing there's some empty spaces here oh come on um here you see here, there is a little bit of a strand, there's a strand, and there are so many empty spaces, and you can compact them in a certain way, but if you want to have the same amount of copper as this, this will physically take more space. Right. So, here it comes, the disadvantages, advantages, okay, advantages for the solid core wire. Cheaper to produce because, well, it involves less process. Right more compact diameter for the same current carrying capa capability as stranded now when you run one or two wires it doesn't make too much difference but if you have a whole bunch in a pipe then yes it does make a difference uh, and then here another one the, another advantage for the solid core wire it's less likely to fail due to corrosion Well, does copper corrode? Yes, it does. It just doesn't corrode the same thing as iron does, but it does corrode. Corrosion is basically reaction with oxygen. It oxidizes. Yeah. Producing different type of a chemical. Um, all right, so why is it less likely to fail due to corrosion? Well, you per you have uh what, what, what we have here is a solid core wire <clears throat> and there's only so much uh area that is exposed to the air now when we have this thing cut in pieces and each piece is just basically you know brought together the air can get between those so there's more area that is exposed to the air as simple as that now let's look at the advantages for the stranded wire very flexible and would stay withstands a greater amount of flexing and vibration and it's easier to route of course because it's more flexible now which brings me to the point um is solid core wire available in all gauges which means in all thicknesses all standardized thicknesses well no right. there's always some sort of an exception but we're talking generally speaking 
No, it's not available in all different gauges. We could have this solid core wire being produced to be only so thick. And if it gets thicker and thicker, we're going to pass the threshold of uh, we're not con we're not producing a wire anymore. We're producing like a you know a, a, a metal bar. Right? Uh, so when wires get thicker and thicker, uh, then they are only going to be available in stranded configuration, just because uh, well, if you have the solid core wire in such great thickness it's becoming pretty much impossible to flex or or, or, or or place or route or run through things, all right? So just keep that in mind, all right? So very flexible and withstands greater amount of flexing and vibration. That's the advantage of that. If you pop the hood of the car, internal combustion engine, for example, or pretty much any car, you are not going to find any solid core wiring there because cars do vibrate, the engine vibrate, vibrates, and you know, uh, so all the wires that's, that are there are going to be stranded. And of course, easier to route okay, for the stranded. Now, disadvantages for the solid core typically available in smaller gauges, which means smaller thicknesses. Keep in mind. It's inversely proportional. The bigger the number of the gauge, the thinner the wire. It just goes the other way. Right? So gauge 12 is thicker than gauge 14. And gauge 20, 22, or 24 are thin wires. Those are the wires that you're going to use for your breadboard electronics uh, labs and experiments and what you do right so you're probably going to have gauge 20 22 sometimes 24. Right. now when it comes to those uh, coil windings for guitar pickups or um, little hobby motors and so on uh, then you're going to have that uh, laminated wire of gauge uh, well 40 42 which means very thin but for the household wiring, most of the wiring, not all, because uh, you're going to have to have some wire, some outlets or receptacles that are going to require you. They're going to get you. Can't speak too early in the morning. Uh, you will be required to install thicker wires because some of the receptacles will be of greater opacity. Right? But most of the wiring inside the house is going to be gauge 14. And that's what we, will, we are working with uh, during our labs. Okay? That's gauge 14. So get used to seeing that, get used to feeling this thing between your fingers. Uh, that's gauge 14. You can have uh, the, on on our wire carousel. There are some gauge twelve also wires. Uh, you can play with that. Uh, just just take a look at that. See which one is gauge fourteen, which one is gauge twelve, and see what the difference is. And if you're not sure, and if you still want to know, ask me. I'll show you. See. Uh, all right. So disadvantages of like I said, solid core wire typically typically available only in smaller gauges, which is thin wires um, and disadvantage again for solid core continuous flexing or vibration will cause the wire to fatigue and break now disadvantage disadvantages for the stranded wire diameter is larger for the same carrying capability as same current carrying capability as solid so we just talked about that uh, it is more costly to produce as the manufacturing process is more complex. Uh, and it's, well, this one here, the solid core uh, might fail due to vibration or flexing. Now, the solid, the stranded, it's more likely to fail due to corrosion from the capillary action 
and a high surface area. Well, so it is more prone to fail due to, corro due to corrosion because more area is exposed than the solid core. All right, uh, what do we have here? Why are homes wired using solid rather than stranded? Okay, stranded wire is more expensive to make or to produce. At a given wire gauge, stranded is going to be larger than solid, so we talked about that. Uh, and it's the cross-sectional area that, that, that conducts. Well, basically, uh, you can read that later on. But we already said that probably five times during this uh, few last few minutes that we're together here. Uh, now, uh, the main advantage of stranded is that it's more flexible. You generally don't need this in home wiring because it's all put in place once and hidden behind the walls, floors, and ceilings. When you screw a solid wire into a switch or receptacle, you can tell it's secure. I could see individual strands coming loose as you fold wires back into the electrical box. So, for the screw terminals, stranded wire, well, it's a little bit, well, a little bit more difficult to, uh, to keep the whole thing together so it doesn't fray, all right, if I can say that. All right, now... AWG stands for American Wiring Gauge. And here are some references because I have used some um, pictures and some ideas from uh, other sources, and I am required to provide the references. All right, so here. There you go. You can pause the video if you want, and you can type the whole thing if you want. Or you can click on that when you download the presentation if you're a participant in my class. All right, so here was the supplement. Now let's let's go to the other um, presentation here. Control L for the. All right. On the left hand side, we have different types of cables. So this is the household wiring and cables presentation. All right. Uh, now, there are certain cables that I want you to look at. Let me just zoom it properly here. Uh, all right. First thing. Okay, the fasteners or connectors we will deal with in, uh, in the uh, lab. I'll be showing you some of those con different connectors and fasteners. Uh, now, First contestant, contestant number one, it says 14-2. Right. This one says 14-3. Okay, now let's analyze what do we see here. In the 14, the 14 stands for the gauge, so it's the gauge 14. So that specifies the thickness of the cable, gauge 14. Now, here's the 2. It is how many wires we have in that cable. But is there something wrong? Is this a mistake? No, it's not a mistake. Because you would look at this thing. Okay, how many how many wires do we have in this cable? Uh, well, it says that we have two. But let's see. One, two, three. Okay, what gives this time? What's going on here? All right. So this number two specifies something that's called and please listen careful what i'm going to say it specifies the number of current carrying conductors what is a current carrying conductor a current carrying conductor is a conductor that is supposed to carry the current under normal circumstances so a normal circumstance would be a light bulb is on, a TV is on, your clock radio is on, and so on. Right? And while that device is on, the current flows from one wire 
at any given point, because we are talking about AC current, which is alternating current, so you're going to have to freeze the moment, and at any frozen moment, the current will be flowing out of one and into the other conductor, forming a closed loop. So those two wires will be called current carrying conductors, again, under normal circumstances. So in this case, we're going to have the white, which is always neutral, just remember, white is always neutral. And then we're going to have black as hot. Now in the 14.3, we're going to have white as neutral, black as hot, and then red as also hot, the other hot. So we got two hots, one neutral. And what else do we have here? We have something that's called a bonding wire or grounding wire. And I will be using that thing interchangeably. Right? Uh, so, we already talked about uh, what is the difference between bonding and grounding, and it's just as a reminder. Let's say here is the distribution panel. Right? The distribution panel will have a uh, grounding bar, where all the grounds will be connected together. If the grounding bar, and in this one here, you can see the grounds and the, some of the neutrals are connected together. So let's say if this bar is connected straight into a something that's called a true ground. It could be a plate driven into the ground outside. It could be a spike driven into the ground outside. And there are certain ways that it has to be done or it will be something that's labeled as true ground on the construction site in that room right so if that point goes with the straight wire uninterrupted right to that point then we call this point as grounded right? now from there from this point the grounding wire will be connected to receptacles, switches, uh, what not, whatever involves connecting a ground, ground chassis or grounded uh, device box. That is also grounded because electrically, yes, it is connected right to the ground, but not right to the ground. It goes to the ground through something else, which is at the same potential, but because there's no single uninterrupted wire that takes you through the true ground, then that grounding point of the receptacle is going to be called bonded. That we, we say that it's bonded, right? So you will hear the bonding terminal, bonding screw, bonding wire interchangeably, right? And I will be doing that thing on purpose. So you get used to the, to, to the two, uh, two words. So we have the bonding wire, but when we specify the cable, we don't count that in the number that uh, we write in the specification. Right? So this 14.2 tells us that's a 14 gauge, the, the conductors are 14 gauge thick. Well, you can say that. And it was supposed to have two current carrying conductors. And if there is a bonding wire, it's not counted in that number. Now, is bonding wire a current carrying conductor? Well, no as per definition. Um, is it supposed to be able to carry current? Yes, it is supposed to be able to carry current if something goes wrong which means that's not normal circumstances. Let's say there is a certain, do we have any devices here? No, we don't. Oh yeah, we do. Let's say here, right here, here is a device box, this metal box here. 
And that metal box is made out of what? Well, metal. Steel box. Steel is a metal, and metal is considered as a conductor, which means it can carry electricity. So, let's say if there, if there were, if there was no bonding wire connected to the box, then the box would be just floating in the air, so to speak, electrically. Now there is going to be a neutral wire connected to one of the terminals of the receptacle and there's going to be a hot wire connected to the other terminal of the receptacle and everybody happy, right? Okay. What happens if by some sort of accident that hot wire becomes detached and it touches the metal box? Well, that metal box becomes hot. Which means, if your feet are grounded, and usually they would be, and if you touched that metal box, you would be providing a current pathway from the box through your body to ground. So, to prevent that from happening, we are bonding the box. Which means the grounding or bonding wire is going to be permanently mounted right to the box. So the box is grounded or the box is bonded. What happens if that wire becomes loose now, the hot wire? If it becomes loose and if it touches the metal box, the current will flow from that box, from the hot wire through the box to ground. And it's going to, the resistance of that, is, of the box, is, well, pretty much zero so you're going to have a huge current flowing through that wire which is going to be way more than the circuit breaker is able to provide because that's a safety measure for that thing and it's going to be let's say the circuit breaker is specified as 15 amps so if there is anything more than 15 amps flowing through that circuit breaker the circuit breaker is going to go oh nope 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 Poof, it's going to open interrupt the circuit too much too much right you're trying to carry too much through that wire so of course if that hot wire touches the box and the current flows directly to the ground from that, so it's going to be a huge amount of current, way more than this can give you, and the circuit breaker is going to trip and open the circuit. So that's a safety. So this here, oh, come on. This here bonding wire is not considered as a current carrying conductor because it is not supposed to carry current under normal circumstances. It's just there for safety reasons. If something goes wrong, then this thing kicks in and takes the hit instead of you. Right? All right, so neutral is always white. In 14.2, or whatever the 2 is, right? In 14.2, in 12.2, be the same thing. You're just going to have thicker wires because they're going to be gauge 12. Right? So you're going to have neutral wire. And you're going to have one hot wire. How many physical conductors in this wire? Physical conductors, you're going to have three, right? One, two, three. How many current carrying conductors? Two. So in the 14, two, even though we have three physical conductors, we have two current carrying conductors. Now, when it comes to voltages in North America here, and we talked about that when uh, we were talking about uh, the multimeters, right? between the neutral and the hot, there is, well, specified 120 anywhere between 110 120 so different literature is going to specify but for the most part it's going to be specified as 120 volts ac rms rms not peak to peak not peak not average 120 rms and we already talked about what that means now Sorry, this thing is jumping on me here.
when it comes to voltages also these two neutral and bonding wire there is supposed to be no voltage between those they should be at the same potential in fact in some circumstances you're going to see that they're actually at some point they might be elect they will be electrically connected see here's the bare copper and the neutral they're connected to the same same spot there should be no voltage there if like for example if you're required to replace a ceiling fan in the bathroom and whatnot uh, or you, you get into you know, taking things apart always check take take some time take your multimeter out and also always verify it's just take it will take you five seconds maybe 10 or 15 seconds to verify that yes there is 120 volts rms here and multimeter will show you rms so there you go should read 120 volts uh and uh between these two you should read no volts it should read zero volts now in some of the auto range multimeters is that going to show you some voltage well, it might. Right? It might show you like, you know, uh, half a volt or maybe a quarter of a volt or something like that. But that's just considered to be noise. Right? Yeah? But it should be, technically, it should be zero. There should be no potential difference between neutral and bonding wire. If you take something apart... And you just do a quick check and you go, oh, there's 120 volts between the white and the bare copper. Uh, okay, you got yourself a little job to do. Right. Because you're going to have to trace where the problem is. Where is it that there is some wrong connection that's made? And if you're the last person that, that if you just leave it like that and put them back together, if something goes wrong, chances are it's going to be your fault because you're the last person who touched it. Right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but that's uh, you know, a completely different topic. Right. Now, 14.3, what do we have here? 14.3 stands for gauge 14, 3, 3 what? 3 current carrying conductors. How many physical wires in that cable? Well, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, because we are going to have that bonding wire. Now, some cables will not include the bonding wire, so it will be a two-wired armored cable, three-wired armored cable. The two one is going to have neutral and black, neutral and hot, white and black. The three-wired armored cable is going to have neutral, hot, and hot. Right. Uh, some of the specifications you're going to see uh, is the um, um, uh, UF, right? UF cable is typically used in underground feeder cable. Now, when you buy cables, there are different specifications. Some of the cables going to have you're going to run have to run in conduits. Some of the cables are capable of something that's called direct burial cable, which means you can just dig a trench. But there are certain rows that you have to dig a trench. You have to dig it deep enough in certain spaces. Where, you know, you're just going to have to uh, go below, below the freezing uh, uh, depth. All right? uh, there are certain rules that you have to dig the trench. But you don't have to have that thing in the pipe. You can just bury it directly in the ground and just uh, and, and have it like that. Right? If it's specified as underground feeder cable, not all cables you can do that with. Right. Now, another, here just to explain the gauge. I'm not sure if you can see it clearly or not, but you see here 12 gauge, and here's 10 gauge. 12 is, as a number, is greater than 10. Right. But remember what I said? It's, the, it's inversely proportional. The number goes up, the thickness goes down, and vice versa. So 12 gauge is a bigger number. 12 will be thinner than 10 gauge. Okay? So we got it here. 
Now you can uh, click on some links here if you want. Um, can we see this thing here clearer or not? Uh, I can see, look, see these are the thick, thick cables. And those are stranded. And these here are solid core. There we go. Uh, common household wire and cable wire types. Solid core wire, stranded wire. We talked about that already. Multiconductor cables. Now here. NM. NM stands for non-metallic sheeted cable. Non-metallic. So this is the cable that we're going to be dealing with mostly, almost all the time, during this semester. Later on, in next semester, you will be introduced to different... I will also introduce you to the armored cable in our labs, but that's as far as I go. Uh, then later on, for different other different types of cables, you're probably going to deal with uh, the next uh, next semester with uh, uh, whichever whoever the instructor you're going to get. All right. So again, here here is the sheathing, and it's non-metallic. That's an NM type of a cable, non-metallic, and it has the sheathing, non-metallic sheathing. Then you have some separation material there to accomplish different uh, purposes um, and then you're going to have the grounding wire or bonding wire and look white is neutral black is hot right. now over here you're going to have the same thing 14 3 that's for that's 12 2 which means it's this cable this conductor here is thicker than this one here right because gauge 12 the number is smaller, which means the wire is thicker. So this conductor will be thicker than this conductor. These are the these these are conductors that are 14 gauge here, and these are conductors that are 12 gauge. Now 12 two, which means it has two current carrying conductors. Does it? Yes. Here's the neutral. Here is the hot. If it were a DC, just for simplicity. Uh, these two will complete a circuit, which means the current would flow out the hot one and go through a load and complete the circuit on the neutral, and that will be connected to the well, neutral bar. In the, so the current would flow from here to here to, uh, as a complete circuit. And this will be just sitting there, not conducting any current. If something goes wrong, bang, that, that thing kicks in. Now, it's an AC, so yes, the current is not going to flow constantly from one to the other. It's going to go like this, like, eh, 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 eh. like it's just going to very fast uh, alternate. AC, alternating current. All right, now 14.3, 14, 14 gauge conductors, 3, 3 what? 3 current carrying conductors yeah. now for the large appliances uh, you're going to use uh, thicker cables and notice here uh, some of those cables hot ones are they're going to be uh, stranded right? uh, what does it say here large appliance cable for detailed uh, for dedicated sorry 120 volt circuit stranded wires are bendable but barely all right, so thicker cables, you know, you're going to have you know, tendencies to use that. Now, um, MC. All right, metallic cable, armored. Um, here's the, well, we will talk about those uh, later on as well. It has an armored sheathing, metallic. And then... Uh, well, there is more than one because this is just a sheeting here, and what comes out of here could be different things. 
even data cables will have armor sheeting. Uh, so what what this picture is trying to show you is this, that there, here's the metallic metallic cable, metallic sheeting, uh, <clears throat> or metallic clad, uh, depending on who prints the literature. Um, uh, and that is, uh, well, it's a tougher cable. Right? Now, when it comes to installations, non-metallic and metallic, The non-metallic, you can on you can't install on um, met, on metallic framing on metal fr or steel framing. Uh, you're going to notice that uh, some of the buildings will be built with a timber framing, which is a wood framing, and some of the households or buildings will involve. Uh, steel framing if it's a timber framing you can mount surface mount well surface mount on the framing you can mount either this or that directly onto it if it's a steel framing you can't mount non-metallic sometimes you're going to have the whole house done in timber and maybe some of the inside walls are going to be added and they will be you know made out of steel because later on addition or whatnot if that's the case if you really really want to mount it to the frame then you're going to have to screw in a timber stud to the metallic frame and then you can mount that on the metallic on the on the on the wood timber frame on the two by four can you run that in the metallic conduit? Yes, you can. Okay. So you can't round surface on metallic frame unless you run a conduit or a pipe and you can put it in the pipe and run it that way. All right, gauges. Look at that. Common wire sizes. Look. 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, uh, okay, it keeps go 0 and 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. See, the, so there's a double two, triple, double zero, triple zero, quadruple zero, okay? The thinner cables, right up to gauge 10, they could be solid or they could be stranded. But the, what this picture is trying to show us is normally once you hit gauge 8, which is way thicker than gauge 14, then you're going to have tendencies to see stranded wires simply because you won't be able to flex a metal bar that is gauge number 1. Now, are there any special cases? Yes, there could be some special cases for special order for some maybe grounding bars or uh, something else. There could be, you know, but that's not considered a cable anymore. It's a solid type of a conductor or a bar. I right? can say grounding bar. All right. All right. So when the, the thicker the cables get, conductors get, they, uh, they tend to be stranded. And what this also shows you that, you see, if the number, when the number goes up the thickness is the thickness goes down right number the gauge goes down in number the wire becomes thicker you're just going to have to kind of grasp that idea and and make sure that idea enters your bloodstream so you don't have to think about it all right all right a bit of a reading here and uh we're almost uh you know what? No, we're just going to stop right here. And the next uh, time we're going to see each other, which will be in person, uh, we're going to take on from from this slide. All right. OK, well, um, it's a wonderful Monday. Get things are getting warmer. And what day is it, kids? It is almost Friday. Why? Because every day is almost Friday. Some days are almost there than others. OK. All right, before I get too philosophical, enjoy your day, and I'll see you when I see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Hey.